down here in Melbourne, Australia and in Brisbane where my guest Marnie Perna is. Welcome to you all. Thank you so much for joining us here on Angel Heart Radio. Today Marnie and I are going to be talking about recognizing what is stressing us and then how do we deal with it. So sit back and enjoy. If you are watching this anywhere else but on Angel Heart Radio Facebook page, may we suggest that that's where you go to because by going there, you're going to be able to interact with us and we love the interaction. May we remind you that these shows should never replace your legal, medical, nor uh, professional advice, <laughs> nor your own sound judgment. And with that, I will um, hand over and say welcome, 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 Marnie Perna. Thank you, Annette. And it's a lovely, fine Brisbane morning up here at, um, today, so which is great. Excellent. So we've had quite a few storms in recent times, so, you know, yeah. It's yes. Yes. one yes. of those stressful situations that we'll talk about. Now, it's... That, that is so true because storms can create havoc and, of course, havoc can cause stress. So can we start with that one, Marnie? Because yeah. storms can be predicted. On the other hand, they can come totally out of the, the blue because sometimes we can be warned and they don't happen. And then other times they appear without authorities tending to be warned. Yeah. It's, um, so just remember, if just we'll start the premise with everyone has a stress barometer. So you right. have a gauge, like a weather gauge, and it registers your stress. And what we need to do is we need to keep the barometer at an even level, preferably less than 50%. Okay, so when your stress levels, when your barometer is lower, you have capacity to cope. It, you have more potential for solutions that if, if your stress barometer is right up high, it'll overflow and you'll just have a meltdown. All right, so just remember everyone has stress and stress um, can be helpful. It's just when stress is an accumulation, it's not as helpful. We need stress to be able to be let go and deal with um, whatever's going on. So the weather is one of those things that you have to put in to universal business. Now, you have no control over the weather. So think about it. You have your business, you have other people's business, and you have universal business. The only one you can help, and that's with stress as well, the only one you can do anything about is your own stress business. Other people's and universal is out of your control. The universal one, especially the, the other people's, you can influence. You can't make it disappear. Mm -hmm. So remember the, those environmental solutions that um, is not able to be contained. What you have to do to help yourself cope with any stress, and that might be just being scared of, of um, storms or mm -hmm. worrying mm -hmm. about flooding or it's too hot, it's too cold, it doesn't matter what it is. What solution can you have on hand that helps you cope better? All right, so if you think it's going to storm and you've got to go to work, take an umbrella or take a raincoat or plan how you'll get home if something happens and the weather's too nasty. Like I had to go and pick up my little granddaughters yesterday afternoon and I left here early because there was predicted a storm, right? I thought I'll go down and get them. The little one's a bit scared of thunder. So I'll get it home before it all happens. Left my house, was just sort of driving out onto the highway and looked straight ahead and straight ahead of me was this massive cloud, like just phenomenal. And it, for me, it triggered a response from many, many years ago when I had to drive out and I was going to pick up takeaway pizza and I drove into a hailstorm. The sky, you know how they say it turns green and you look at the sky and you go, is it green, is it not green? You know, and it's green. It was a bruised licorice green. And here I'm driving down the highway into it, thinking, oh, no. <laughs> and all I could think of is where can I stop if it really hits down before I get the girls? There was no point getting them in the middle of it. 
So I, it was a big shopping centre. I got to the shopping centre and I got into an underground car park and I sat it out for a good 20 minutes. The girls didn't know I was coming early, so it didn't affect them, but it certainly made me feel more content and, and more at ease that I wasn't in the midst because it was a whipper. It was blowing. I was about four car bays underneath the car park in an open underground car park. And when it first started, it just was raining in, in front where the, where the car park started sort of thing. By the yes, time yes. that 20 minutes was over, there was water all the way through to the fourth bay on the ground. Wow. It was just waves. And a car was even shaking underneath the building. And I wasn't the only one under there, by the way. Lots of people ended up coming under there. <laughs> so, you know, you've got to think ahead. So what is your solution to what you know is a stress trigger? Right. Write down your list. So write down environmental is, is a big one. So what can you do? What are you worried about? What is concerning you? What is adding to your stress barometer? Identify what kind of weather it might be and what can you do about it? If you're worried about fires, you know, is your emergency kit up to date? Have you got all your, your uh, good paperwork in it in something you can grab quickly? Have you got a change of clothes and toothbrush, toothpaste in almost like a hospital bag? And so if you have to go quickly, because in Australia and overseas, it's not just in Australia only. I know, you know, um, Europe and, and America have some shocking bushfire seasons. So oh, what sure. have you got already together that you don't have to think about at the last minute that you can just grab and go? Mm -hmm. You know, have you got a carrier for your pets? Because, you know, no one wants to leave their pets behind, but you can't leave them loose in the car. So make sure if you don't have a cat cage or you don't have a dog harness, or a bird cage or something, get one, have it on hand. You may never need it, that doesn't matter. But if you do need it, you have it. So yes, you'll be still stressed. Here's, I, I do have to momentarily go, I'm sorry, Ned, and I'll speak to you shortly. <laughs> Thank you. Now, everybody, this gives me the opportunity. Sorry, I'm not even to hear your Shaley. Thank you, Shaley, for coming. And we will ignore the background noise at the moment. This, Marnie and I planned ahead for this. So it's a classic example of, or as Marnie was talking about, you know, if we can uh, predict, sorry, if we can, yes, think ahead and realize that something is going to happen, how are we best to deal with it? Shaley, Thank you for joining us. And people, if you missed Shaley's uh, lovely show with me a few weeks ago, maybe you would like to tune into that one. Shaley had an experience uh, in heaven uh, way back um, many, many years ago, and that has influenced the rest of her life. And her life is has been a very challenging one. So I see Shaley as an inspiration. And let's face it, we all need inspiration. And that's what we're hoping, that we will give you the small, uh, lots of inspiration and practical hints today. The topic I think is very, very timely because Christmas can be a very stressful time. And this year, it's compounded because there are lots of families who are unable to gather as they normally would. So how can we deal with this? Rather than going, oh, well, you know, Christmas is, a few, is two or three weeks away, what can we do about it? The thing is, let's work on our stresses now. Acknowledge the fact that yes, I am very, very concerned about how I'm going to deal with Christmas. So think about, as Marnie did, all right, this is a stress. What is it that I can do about it? And if necessary, spend some time writing down what you can do. So, I would also like to point out Marnie's book, Creating Calm Amid Chaos. That's where today's topic came up from. And this is a book that, yes, can be read from cover to cover. It's also a book 
that can be used to, okay, what is it that uh, can guide me today? So if you are concerned, as I was, it was like, okay, what's a topic that we can have for this month that is relevant? And there you are. The book, I held the book between my hands and asked that question and up came facing and recognizing my stresses. We can calm ourselves by acknowledging our stresses and then going, okay, so how am I going to deal with them? Marnie's book is a practical tool. So if this is the first time you've heard about it, or maybe it's simply a reminder. Oh, that's a good idea. You might like to treat yourself to a present, or it might be something that uh, another member of your family or a friend might find useful. Marnie's book is available in hardcover. It is an e-book and it's also an audio book. So you have lots of uh, choices there and you can reach out to Marnie. Her website is www.kinique.com that's K-I-N-I-Q-U-E dot com. And you could order the book there. I also believe that the three versions are available via Amazon. Aren't we fortunate to have choices? How often do you sit? Huh? How often do you sit and consider your choices? Do you consider how you are going to deal with a day? How did you wake up this morning? Did you wake up with a smile on your face? Did you wake up with eager anticipation? Or was it a case of, oh, what am I going to do today? What am I going to do first today? And sometimes just taking a few moments to plan really helps. I find that the night before, if I write down the things that I wish to do in a day, the things that I need to do in a day, and then the next morning I check the list. Some I've remembered, and some I haven't. So that list really helps me because I can tick them off. And sometimes before I get to some of those things, something else has cropped up. You know, the unexpected phone call, a friend reaching out. I was really grateful this morning that a friend felt that yes, she could reach out she needed a listening ear and I had time. Shall I say I made time? And yes, my friend felt a little better after the phone call and I felt warm because I'd been able to assist a friend. It's not easy to reach out. How often do we reach out and say, are you able to help me? How often do we then remember to express our gratitude? And a simple thank you is fine. It's awareness. It's awareness of who we are and what is it that we can do to enhance our own well-being and also to assist others. I find that by assisting others, I feel good. It can be a simple thing. You know, that a paper that's delivered daily might be sitting on a lawn. It can be taken to the front door. So that when the person opens the door, they get a surprise. They don't have to trudge out 
especially if it's inclement weather, or cold or windy or too hot. You know, that's a really simple thing. And a lot of the time, the people are completely unaware of who might have done that. They might even think that the, liver, the delivery person has an excellent arm. Because these days, they're not placed in letterboxes here. I don't know about anywhere else in the world. They're tossed as <laughs> somewhere on the property. And sometimes, <laughs> it can take a while to find them. Hello, Carol. Thank you for joining us. So for the people who have joined us, and who are writing comments. How do you recognize your stress? And what do you do about it? Do you have a list of what you are able to do? You know, that, that really helps if we have a list where we can go and go, oh, okay, how did I deal with this last time? Sometimes it will come to mind. Like Marnie said this morning. No, she was faced with this huge dark green cloud that triggered an earlier response. So it was like, well, I certainly don't want to drive in this. How can I take cover? Where can I take cover? Rather than going into panic, it's, and sometimes we automatically go into panic, don't we? But trying to seize the moment of, okay, what is it that I'm able to do? And welcome back, Thank Marnie. You. Interesting. Marnie has frozen for a moment. We'll leave that one for the moment. And I'm sure Marnie will join us very shortly. See, how is it that we deal with what's going on? Take a deep breath or we simply work through it as Marnie is doing at the moment. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I refuse to challenge myself. Hello. I don't know what happened there. The computer went, yeah, let's have a meltdown. That's exactly right. Isn't it interesting when we're able to stay calm and think about, as you did when you were faced with that big black cloud and you knew that you didn't want to be uh, driving in those mm. conditions. So it was like, okay, where am I able to stop where, that I'm protected? And it sounds as though you weren't the only one no. who had that so solution. There were many people there. <laughs> in fact, one guy parked in not the best spot. I must admit I didn't choose that spot, but there was a spot with three trolleys that were loose and he's just pulled in almost next to them. And in that wind, the trolleys took off. So um, he had to get out of his car and move them out the way in the midst of it all. So again, you need to judge what you're doing and how you're doing it. And is that the best and safest solution for you? Right. So. I'd like to welcome Dorothy Allen here today. Hello, Dorothy. That's a new name. So welcome, Dorothy, to Angel Heart Radio. And Shaylee has a, uh, she has a comment to say, I stop eating when I am really stressed out. Oh, maybe that's a solution for me. I, I sit myself down and go through my emotions, face them, think of events that have happened and process them. Then I eat ice cream. Ah, <laughs> a girl after my own heart. Well done. <laughs> We all have a feel-good food, okay? Now, a feel-good food, and we've spoken about this often on the show, a feel-good food is not generally overly healthy. Like, it's generally not kale chips, I keep telling people. It, what it is, it's the food that you may have been given as a child that made you feel nurtured. 
all right, or something that you have that's a real treat that, again, makes you feel nurtured. Now, ice cream and chocolate come into that category, okay? But it, and it's okay if it's limited. But if you sat there and ate a two-litre bucket of ice cream, A, you'll feel very ill, you'll have an instant um, energy fizz, but then you'll have a very deep dive, which doesn't help you. And also, too, just remember that we're talking about stress and our barometer. Our stress barometer is also added to by our negative self-talk and negative beliefs in self. But if you eat the two litres of ice cream as much as you may enjoy it at the time, you will then start deriding yourself from having done it. So you're kind of adding to the negative experience even though it was pleasurable. Right? So give yourself, you can limit your pleasure. <laughs> Sounds yeah. terrible. You know what I mean. Like give yourself, say I'm going to have a bowl of ice cream and give yourself a nice bowl and enjoy that and eat it guilt-free because you don't need then to add to the negative experience by being upset with yourself for having done what you've done. You make the choice to have the ice cream, honour it, thank it, bless it, limit it. I like that. I, I need to remember the limiting. Yeah. Money. I, did, <laughs> I did think of you yesterday because I gave myself comfort food. As a child, I enjoyed chocolate custard. So yep. I made one and uh, it's very nice, very nice. <laughs> well done, you. Yeah. Well, Shaylee's saying that makes so much sense and it, and it does, yeah. yeah. So again, a timely reminder. You know, when you think of how we tend to overindulge on yeah. Christmas Day or any, you know, any festivity, I know, say Thanksgiving uh, in the USA, when in Canada so we're we're faced with a feast I know I used to do that if I went to a smorgasbord it was mm. as though I was never going to have an <laughs> another meal and the thing is then we regret it we because we don't really enjoy it all um, because and then we're so full all we want to do is sleep yeah or feel ill <sighs> yes so, well, you, that's need, worse. you need your experiences to be positive experiences and not, um, not the negative one. So remember your barometer, so you, it's in your control how much you eat, so you actually have control over that. It's not like the weather. Mm. Okay, so the other environmental stresses are, are chemical stresses, which we don't often think about, but, you know, um, some people are allergic to new cars. So they buy new cars and they feel ill and they don't know why and they go, this is bizarre, and you get out of the car and you feel a bit better. So you think, well, maybe it's, it's um, travel sickness or something like that. But I have actually known cases of people that were allergic to the plastic of a new car. So for them, that hit their stress bucket and their immune system just wasn't coping and it was overwhelmed. And they actually had to get rid of their car, which was bizarre, I know, but it was just um, something in the, in the what was being let off out of the car was making her feel ill. So note down what environmental stresses might be around you. It might be um, the noise. It might be a noise stress. So you might live in a busy area with planes and, and every time a plane goes over, you, you go like this. But right. you, have to, you can't change that. So how can you protect yourself? Can you buy a good uh, set of noise-cancelling earphones? You know, on, on the peak time, there's, there's usually a peak time where planes come in and out. So can you use that in that peak time so you're not being agitated by by that noise um, I mean they use that a lot for children that have autistic tendencies that are overwhelmed by sensory uh, the auditory senses um, right. they wear little headphones and it, it helps them cope why mm -hmm. would you not do it no, yeah. so come up with solutions to what you know is an environmental stress for you you know, the journey to and from work is an environmental stress. If that stresses you, how can you change it? Can you go a different way? Can you add something that is pleasurable to the journey, like listen to iPods or listen to Angel Heart Radio is a really good one, um, or, you know, have some nice essential oils with you. Like There's a lovely one I use a lot called Stress Away. Perfect for the name. It de-stresses you and it's got vanilla and lime in it and a couple of other really lovely smells to it. And have it on a hanky and just have it near your nose or just go like that. And, and your body knows why you're using it. It's saying to you, calm the levels down. If you can calm your levels of stress like a barometer, you don't want it to explode at the top like an old thermometer. You're wanting to be able to address the situations that are stressing you. Christmas is, a, is an external influence. 
Some people love it. Some people hate it. Yeah. <laughs> There's very few in betweens, I reckon. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. That's the truth. So it's either you love Christmas or you hate Christmas. And there's various reasons why you love or you hate it. For me, it's all about family and fun and frivolity and festive and going out buying useless presents that no one wants, but it gives me pleasure giving it to them. <laughs> <laughs> um, it doesn't have to cost a fortune. It has, has to be bought with love. I was taught that very early on from my mum. We grew up quite poor. We, you know, the typical old housing commission families. And um, there was not a lot of spare money for gifts. But my mum made sure that we all had five gifts under the Christmas tree every Christmas. There was four of us. And those gifts could have been as simple as a knife fork spoon set wrapped separately. And then we got one, one what we used to call a bigger gift, which right. was a bit more personal. But we, we always had our own cup, saucer, plate, knife and fork. That was ours. And I did it with my kids. They all had their own sets as well. They come and visit me now and now, that's my plate. He's using my plate. <laughs> So, you know, it doesn't have to be big. Another thing mum always said to me, if you can give me nothing else, if you, if the money's just not there and, and you don't want to go into debt, then don't go into debt for it. Just limit yourself and come up, be creative. And she would say a cherry ripe. If you've bought me a cherry ripe, you know I love them. Right. Yes. You know, so if that's what you got, that's what you got. Mm-hmm. Mind you, in her older age, she used to get very distressed if she got the smallest box. <laughs> I got the smallest present here, she'd say. Mum, but it's a good one. <laughs> so, you know, what what can you do to, to make Christmas time less stressful? Can you have you already got some of your gifts so that for you're not having to go out in if you're not a person that loves shopping in the shopping centres, have you managed to get some of your gifts and get them wrapped and say to yourself, Well, look, here's my list. And that's another good thing, people, is um make a list. Check it twice. <laughs> but, you know, if you have a list, you don't have to keep it all in your head. You've taken mm-hmm. action on your thought, which can be a stress. So take action on it. You've had a solution. Your, your stress barometer can just go down a little bit. It may be stressful when you look at the list and see how many you haven't got yet, but at least you've got something to follow. It's like a map or a guide. Yes, I don't know yes. about you, Annette. I'm good with guides and, and um, protocols and things like that. You know, it gives me direction. Yes. You know, yeah, I think it uh, it certainly helps me. Yeah. List and yeah. Uh, yeah I so write your list, get your little gifts, or come up, be creative with your list when you're writing them. What can you, you know, can you put together? If you've got little granddaughters or grandchildren, can you put together a little kit? Like I bought mine this year. I was in um, Robin's kitchen, and they had these um, beautiful little cooking sets. So there was a spatula and a a long spatula and a little pair of pliers and a there's a full thing there. And, and they're all, um, they look like sprinkles, so they're made with white silicon with sprinkles in it and they were miniatures. So I bought that in an uh, apron for one of mine because she loves to cook. So it's simple. You can always put a packet of, of um, chocolate muffins in there with it as well and then it's a beautiful little gift for a, for a granddaughter or grandson if they love cooking. Absolutely, yes. No, not not something they'll throw out straight away because it's useful mm-hmm. but it's a bit of fun and, and Aldi had this beautiful book. Uh, haven't, I haven't seen it this year but it's generally in their 99-cent book range. They, they get this amazing range of books for children and it's called um, Maisie's Birthday and it's all about uh, Made with Love, I think it might be, or Made with Love and it's all about a grandmother whose granddaughter comes on a birthday and they make a cake baked out of love so it's instead of flour it's happiness instead of eggs it's it's joy you know so all the ingredients have been given a different name and it's baked with love and it's a, it's you know something like that is a special connection with you with your little yes. or with your biddies if they love to cook and they want to sit there and cook with you you know make mm. a make a boiled fruit cake for someone give them a absolutely. gift absolutely yes. yes it's um I liked last year someone said um, something about uh, was passing a mug on. So mm. filling a, a, and it doesn't have to be a Christmas mug. No. Um, it can be, of course. But even to go through one's own mug collection and uh, find ones that we don't no longer Require use. Require anymore. That are still uh, presentable, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And filling them with something creative. Now, that might be homemade 
cookies or yep. or wrap know. it with the cookies in a little bag beside them sort of thing you know yeah. all these things are so easily bought nowadays in in like places like spotlight and the kitchen shops they all sell the little bags you know the the um the clear cellophane bags or even the two what i call two dollar shops which is like dollars and cents and silly sollies and all those have a section of those sort of bags in their craft area so you know you could put whatever you want in there and put it with it and um, or at the coffee sachets you buy now. It's beautiful sachets now, coffee and tea. You know, put that with it. And, and, yeah, it doesn't have to be expensive nowadays. And let's face it, you see the waste sometimes with the big expensive gifts that aren't required anyhow. Mm-hmm. You know, it's much nicer to just give these little pleasurable things. Well, I think it is anyhow. It shows you've thought about it. It shows you've put some care and attention into it. And, and it's, it's a blessing to be able to do it. I also have a couple of groups of friends and we give pre-loved gifts. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that works well because, yes, there's there can be so many things that we feel that we have to buy at Christmas. Yep. And it, so we don't want to add one more to the list. On the other hand, we want to have some fun. That's exactly yeah. what it's all about. There was um, very recently, where did it come in? Someone had gone to a Christmas networking event or something and, and some of the raffle prizes were pre-loved books that were wrapped up and they were um, they're like a secret Santa. So you didn't know what the book was, but there was a little praises of the book on the front. So they'd written, Dear Sonia, here's your secret book. Um, this is a bit of an inkling of what's in it. And, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did or something like that and had a bookmark with it. And you didn't know until you unwrapped it what the book was inside. So it's like a pick a book. And what I thought it was a great idea. idea. Yeah. Imagine doing that and, and wrapping up a whole stack of your, of your books and taking it to the local hospital to give out on Christmas Day. Because, you know, you get stuck in hospital sometimes and you don't have a book. And right. do you want to flick through the magazines from the last 30 years? Probably not. <laughs> So, you know, to have this selection that they can just hand out and people could sit and read them. So you'd have to pick, well, it doesn't matter what genre it is. People, you know, you put a bit of praises on the front and let the universe make sure the right person gets it. I think that's a great idea and so does Shaylee. So, yeah, very, again, a simple idea and it's recycling. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many things simply get thrown out because Oh, it's sometimes it's easier. Oh, just let it hit the rubbish bin. Yeah. Rather than thinking, okay, so who could use this, or yeah. or how am I best? You know, some cafes now, Marnie, have bookshelves. Yes. You can yes. Borrow books, or even you know, take one and and put one there. And I think they're calling them community book book boxes or something like that. And right. you have different communities are putting them around in the community as well. They're getting a cupboard or a cabinet of some sort and people can just come along and pick a book or leave a book. It yes. doesn't really matter. So, so it, again, it's what can I do to take the stress out of buying gifts for Christmas? Yes. Okay, now if you're someone who's a bit alone at Christmas and doesn't have people to give gifts to and you still want to involve yourself, the local hospital, the local nursing home, you know, that's the old-fashioned socks, jocks and soap. <laughs> You know, those kind of things yep. are received gratefully by anybody um, that it's a gift that someone's given them that they care. I get this most beautiful parcel of books from a very nice lady called Annette McCoy every so often. That I get this parcel and it arrives and, oh, my God, I've got some more magazines. <laughs> so, you know, it's such a treat to get them because it means someone's thinking about you. So if you are alone and, and you, you're feeling as though you're left out and you You'd love to be buying for someone, but you don't know who to buy for. Just say, okay, I'm going to buy 10 secret Santas and leave them at somewhere and yes, someone yes. will pick them up, you know. So it, it just alleviates some of your stress. If you've got too many and, it, and it's overwhelming at Christmas time, which it can be as your family grows and your children get married and have children of their own and then they've got their partners and you've got this massive list, well, maybe it's time to introduce secret Santa. You know, each family gets picked out of a hat, so you're buying for that family and and then someone else gets the other family and do it that way. I personally, I still love all the different presents under the tree and I I know it stresses my husband because he thinks, oh, my God, all this money. But it's, you know, it's 
it's fun. So if you've got 13 people and each of you are buying 13 gifts, it is a pile, but it's fun. I find it fun. I totally agree, yes. yes. So simplify. I know lots of families have gone to Secret Santa. Yeah. I, yeah. Mine did that. They were doing Kris Kringle amongst themselves, but they knew that I delight in being in in buying I, I must admit Marnie I tend to do it during the year as well so it's not a case of oh, it's December what am I going to do um come December it's a case of we'll sort out because uh, I have birthdays in December as well so usually it's okay this is what I've collected who's getting what for birthdays yeah. who's getting what for Christmas? <laughs> And yeah. making sure that with siblings it's um, fairly even. Yeah, yeah, I know. We've got um, one granddaughter who has a birthday just after Christmas and then my daughter has one after Christmas. So you've got that whole um, wanting to, not wanting to just have it as a, a Christmas birthday combined sort of thing, so having it a little bit separate. So, yeah, look, and what I do, and I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but sometimes or what I have done on occasions for the ones whose birthday is straight after they kind of think they've had everything all at once, so they go the rest of the year with, with nothing. So I created um, little folders full of experiences. So I, I gathered um, all these gift vouchers, so for 12 months. So it was a, a voucher a month of different things. So there might have been a voucher for a lovely ice cream or a dinner for two or, you know, all these different vouchers, movie tickets. And they were all, and I put them, because you can go to places like Kiki K and things like that or anywhere at all and buy a folder that's really nice and decorative. And I put this in each month. It didn't mean that's when they had to use them. It just meant she's got something each month if she wants to as a treat. And that became her treat for the year. And um, it worked really well. That's a wonderful idea. Love it. Hmm. And they and combined, like they were fun thinking of 12 things too that you could get the vouchers for that didn't expire. That's the thing you've got to be careful of. Don't buy yes. vouchers. The ice cream, I got caught out with the ice cream shop because there was a um, particular brand and I bought it local and didn't realise the voucher was to be used local. It couldn't be uh, used at another yeah. franchise in another, another place, which was just a little bit annoying. But uh, now that I know that, I would be pre-warned. So no, it's no longer a stress for me because I would either not bother getting it or I would try and organise to get the voucher from where they live, which makes it easier for them to pop in and, and buy a, a nice ice cream. Sure. Yeah. So when you know something's a challenge, so even if you have a little book called your stress barometer book or something, and when something really stresses you, write it in the book but leave room for your solutions. Mm -hmm. So you're not just writing down your problems, you're writing down and another thing is don't call problems problems. Call them challenges. Yes. So, so your energy field, when you think that you've got a problem with something, it just goes, oh, I haven't got the energy. Okay, it depletes your energy. If you think you have a challenge, it's, it's an opportunity. So what solutions can you come up with a challenge? So your language is something that comes into, it's almost like environmental stress because you don't always realise it, but it's personal because you can do something about it. Mm-hmm. All right, so if Christmas for you, and, and I've, we're speaking about Christmas a lot, but it is a Christmas show virtually, isn't it? So <laughs> even if we watch it in the middle of the year, it's all about this particular time of year. So if the word Christmas celebration causes you a stress, can you come up with family gathering or a different name for it that's not, not the thing that's causing you the stress? So rename it. It doesn't matter. It's, it's your, your, um, your stress trigger. So you can do what you want with it. Um, you know, something it's to just clarify that I used to have a problem with red lights. I became the red light queen when I was driving and it not only annoyed myself, it annoyed every passenger in the car. And I must admit too that they couldn't help but talk about it each time we came to a red light. So it was being added to all the time. So then I started to get stressed about being told how many red lights I got. So it's getting stressful. So one day I thought, well, what can I do about this? Because it was becoming a, an issue because I was getting really agitated driving then as well. And I went, you know what? I can do what I want. It's my stress. So I call them non-green lights because we like to get green lights, red lights not so much. So if my red lights became non-green lights, the red light trigger wasn't being triggered. 
Mm-hmm. Everyone else thought I was ridiculous, but that was okay too because they were more being ridiculous about that than the fact I was getting all these non-green lights. But for me, it was empowering to to be able to say, oh, that's just another non-green light. How awesome. Or how annoying or oh dear or whatever like that. It wasn't adding to my my stress trauma trigger about red lights. Excellent idea. Yes. So we have suggested thinking ahead and that's a good one. What happens though when we're uh, in that flight or fight mode and sometimes we go straight there don't we given uh, and do we stop and think okay deep breath which of course is really easy to say but in that moment it's not so easy no no you need you need to have what I often call is like a a power button or something that you can do physically that reminds your body to step out of that stress circle okay so when you overwhelm when you go into flight fight it's because there's a danger right. the body responds flight fight is a um is a primitive reflex I'm talking mm-hmm. technical terms it's a primitive reflex that is indicating there's a danger present and it reminds you to be careful or, or you know danger danger like the old dalek on doctor who remember you used to get dad dalek dalek and um so think about that. So when you go into that flight fight, it's a physical response in your body to a perceived danger. Now that danger has gen- generally come from a previous experience. All right. So what you have to be able to do is if you're feeling yourself going into danger, have something that an immediate response that says to your body and to your response, it's okay, I'm safe. And it can be as simple as saying that. If you you recognise you, you're feeling that stress response, put your hand on your heart area, sort of just here, and just tell yourself, I'm safe. So if your body responds to the fact that I'm safe, that adrenal response slows down, that allows you to think creatively or to come up with a solution. But if you're sitting in that danger response, you're either running from danger or you're fighting in danger. Mm-hmm. You're not meant to be thinking too many other things. So you need to be able to straight away put a pause button on the danger response. Now, if you put a pause button on the danger response and it's still danger, your body is telling you, you need to be fully aware and awake and responsive to what's going on. You might be in a walking somewhere and your hackles go up and you go, ooh. Now, if you say to yourself, I'm safe, but yet you're still on edge, Your body is saying you need to be aware of your circumstances in your environment. So stay alert. Don't go into um, immediate danger mode, but go into alert danger mode so that you can do something about it if it's really something that's that's going on because you have that that feeling about not feeling safe. Mm. But if it's not something where you're in an immediate danger, telling yourself you're safe slows that, that response down so you can think a bit more clearly. Lovely point. Now, Shaylee says that she doesn't get angry anymore because I have found that it's a waste of energy. I think that anger is a cover-up emotion. So if I find myself getting angry, I stop and focus on the real emotion that I am feeling and focus on resolving, processing that emotion. Here, here. Yeah, it's exactly. You're you're identifying why you're angry and you're saying, do I need to be there? Mm. And if you do, that's fine. But, again, limit it. <laughs> you know, you put that, that stop gap on it, put that um, that time limit on your anger. or Because you have to also recognise anger as a pure emotion. Anger comes out of the liver meridian. So the liver meridian and the gallbladder meridian in Chinese philosophy is the green element. Now, the green element is all about grounding and feeling stable and secure. But as elements, they also look after some of the more um, toxic emotions that we may be feeling. All right, so it's okay to say, why am I angry? But also know that anger is a a normal response to something that really upsets you, but Mm. so long as you're in control of your anger. It's when it's uncontrollable, it's, it's very hard. But words like anger, rage, wrath, vitrolic, all those kind of um, envy, jealousy, all those kind of things come in that liver, gallbladder emotion. 
chart, right? And there's always something that if, if you play with oils or essences and things like that, there's always an essence or an oil that addresses that particular emotion. And by you finding out where you're holding it um, within your body, like where am I feeling that? And maybe putting rubbing your hands together and putting your hands over where you're feeling it. Again, mm. it's a bit of self-healing. But it's also taking the next step. It's taking action on that feeling. So yes. taking action to allay it a little bit. Marnie, you've mentioned essences, oils, a couple of times, and I know that you create them yourselves mm. and uh, you do have a website. I do. Dot com, K-I-N-I-Q-U-E. So if people are drawn, uh, suddenly the trigger goes on. I mentioned your book earlier uh, and your essences, you have other things that uh, might be very useful either for ourselves personally or as gifts yep so if people wish to visit your website they can reach out to you there and order they certainly can. There. Yep. one of the very first um, emotional healing sprays that i made was called christmas calm and it was all for that chaos of christmas or where christmas is just so busy and so full on but you need space so Christmas Calm enabled you to step back from all that that was going on, spray the spray and let it come down and, and hand on your shoulders and it just gave you that pause moment so that you could recover and regroup and then you go back into it again, even for those that love Christmas. Um, so it was a lovely um, blend that came up and it's um, it's got white angelica in it, which is just one of the lovely oils of, of protection and, and total just envelops you in this angelic protection mist or coat so that you can cope with all the, you know, Farmer Joe's um, challenges with with Mary Rose over there or, or whatever, you know. Who do I sit next to so-and-so because they're going to, you know, drink all the time and takes away some of that um, negative pleasure from, from the event. So Christmas Calm is a lovely one and it's um, well used. It's um, I sell it regularly for people. And it's also really good for those that are have little meltdown moments they um i have a lady that buys it for her son who lives with autism and it's something that he can regulate himself with he doesn't have to it's not contraindicated for anything he couldn't really do a lot of harm even if he swallowed the whole bottle a little bit of brandy in there but you know overall it would not do him a great deal of harm and he comes in if he's having or feels like he's having one of his meltdowns he comes in and sprays himself and takes a breath and it settles him right down and it's kind of for him being something that he's been able to just go and do without needing permission kind of thing it was something that he could do so but I, I before the show I actually um asked the the clinic what needed to be shared as well and there's one called it's a, a blend of shell essences and it's called happiness and it's got chocolate cowie I am and little whelks in it and um it's just drops and I make it into a spray for people so it's easier they're not having to take drops but the prime mover for it was I am and I am was all about that um, feelings of depression, loneliness, unworthiness, or poor me that sometimes can help when it's there's a lot of stuff going on. So there's a lot of emotional um, energy flying around at the moment that that puts on top of things, and it just is a positive, powerful, positive essence that anchors the other two. So little else is all about having fun and enjoyment, and and um, seeing the lighter element of everything. Um, chocolate cowie is more about um, some of the deeper issues that we we might be addressing but as a combination it's just a lovely combination and I usually um, put it with a um, some of my stress away oil so it's got that nice vanilla -y, lim limey kind of smell to it as well so you know just reach out if, if anyone wants a blend made specifically for them or as a gift um, I make them easily and um, I can post them Your sound has gone in it. No, it's all right. Um, how wonderful. <laughs> I was alerted. I was muted. So there okay. you go. Oh. oh, wonderful, wonderful. So you personally, Marnie, you yeah. delight in Christmas. I can see it in your face. Absolutely yeah. loving it. And I must admit, it's a wonderful, wonderful time of the year for me too. I like going into the city and, and being a part of the festive mood, yeah. you know, looking at the decorations and uh, this Melbourne 
does it very well these days. And yeah, there's just that camaraderie. I also love on the occasion when I've been in London too, totally different weather, but again, still, you know, people are rugged up and enjoying the uh, festive time. Yeah. And again, it's your choice how you cope with it. So if you know Christmas is not your cup of tea, well then rearrange things so that you don't have to be caught up in the whole um, energy of it. So what can you do to dispel why you don't like it? You know, can you just hibernate for four weeks or something like that? I, I don't know. Then there's, there's, There will be something that you can do personally that helps you cope with Christmas or do you need to address why the trauma trigger of Christmas is, is showing up? So sometimes it's stuff we don't realise. You know, if you've been a young child and um, so in clinic, in, in a clinical situation, triggers come up all the time for clients and we will often age regress as to when that trigger first showed up. And so often it can show up either in vitro or in um, in a young child's time. So remember, a child hasn't got the filters to be able to understand what's going on in an adult world. So their filter is very immature. It's very young. So they filter it at their knowledge bank. They don't filter it as an adult knowledge bank. So mm -hmm. as they grow, that filter, unless it's been addressed, stays in, at that, that little filter right and, and it just means that if you can address the hurt that happened then now it will flow through energetically to now so that it becomes it's almost as if your file in your filing cabinet has got two options it's got the original one where that filter wasn't there for them and they might have thought it was their fault because you'd imagine emotions do run high at christmas and at festive times because you know people are doing lots of things and, and their children are home from school and there's all these extra, in, you know, the non-negotiable things you've got no control over from other people or environment. So you could have had a time where it's been a particularly um, financially burdened time. Um, the little child doesn't understand that part of it. They don't understand why they got in trouble because they broke something just on Christmas Day or the day before Christmas. All they know is, oh, my God, that was the time I got the walloping or, or maybe not these days you don't get wallopings. But, you know, I got in trouble and I had to go to my room and it, it started that stress trigger because they didn't understand it wasn't about the broken thing. It was something else was going on altogether. And it's not saying that we know this at the time. Like as parents, we do the best we can for our children and our families, right? Sure. But our knowledge grows and blends as well and matures and, and we get different components put into it. All right, so sometimes a trauma trigger is from a young time. We need to address the trauma back then so that it has the energetic flow on effect now so we can look back and go, yep, but I dealt with that. I had a solution. I've learned something that, you know, can help me move forward. So sometimes we do need to look back and see why that, that why is that worrying me so much? Mm. Yes, a little reflection is good. Yeah, and sometimes you need help with that reflection. So don't don't feel as though reaching out is, is wrong or, or, you know, you should be able to do it all on your own. No, you don't have to. Life is does not meant to be hard. Life is meant to be enjoyed and joyful and filled with experiences that, that um, add to your your pearls of wisdom. You know, don't, don't make it hard all the time. Yeah. Well, Julie, Kiss is um, going, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> which is lovely. Jenny has joined us and so has Borden. Thank That's you, thank nice. you, thank you. It's lovely to see people in the chat. Thank you, everyone. Room. Yeah. Well, I'm breathing, feeling very good, very excited about the coming weeks. I mentioned reflection because I know when the new year starts, Marnie, you have a, a regular personal practice yep. that you do every New Year's Day, I believe. Yep. I try to do it New Year's Day, yes. I, I make a vision board for my year ahead. So I'm just in the process at the moment of setting a date for my, my client vision boards. So <laughs> try to work out which date is the best for, for, the, for the group that are coming through for their vision board. But the vision board, for me, I'm a self-employed um, self small business owner as well as a family person. So my vision for the for the year ahead has to encompass my family as well as my work. So, you know, my vision board is filled with all sorts of bits and pieces and um, I have a wonderful time doing it. It's, it's my special time. 
And I have a word too. I always pick a power word for the year. So mm-hmm. start thinking about what your power word for next year is. And it doesn't matter what it is. If that's the word that shows up for you, that's the word. And it's right. okay. It doesn't have to be the same as everybody else's. It's just a word that, um, you know, dreams coming to me a little bit. So maybe next year is all about dream. Or my dream comes true. Or, you know, what is dream time talking to me? Um, being able to capture maybe some of my dream experiences that I'm having. So, yeah, it's looking like a word for next year. <laughs> well, there we go. Now, Shaylee would like to know, are you a Virgo? No, I'm a Libran. So on the cusp. <laughs> yes, I'm not. Obviously, she thought you may be. Yeah. Um, well, I think it's the one before the, the Libra anyhow. So I think they sit beside each other. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Mm. Ah, close. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I, think, I think I'm really on that cusp as well. I think I'm not far from the, from the cutoff of the beginning of Libra and the old Virgo, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. like you. I don't do a lot of the astrology side of things. I mean, you do and you don't. You, you do it subconsciously sometimes, mm-hmm. um, but then I, I don't. I read my stars and I go, oh, that's so accurate. I love it. <laughs> It's a bit like angel messages that we get constantly in, in clinic sure. and things like that. So that's well, the thing. So, there's so this much is- out there that can assist us, Marnie. You know, yeah. and I I do believe that it's looking at all that is there and then okay, um, like numerology is fascinating when we look at our our dates. Mm. Uh, astrology, yes, there's no it isn't a mistake that we come in at the time that we do where we do uh and the work with that janet hickox does certainly um verifies that and yeah. can give us a great deal of um assistance in we might be wondering you know why are we going through this particular thing and invariably um our birth date can, can um, make a difference throw some yeah. light on that the thing is you, you can't change your birth date so if 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 there's some messages coming through about that date for you, what action can you take over it? Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's um, your birth date is set in stone because it's the actual day you were born. So, you know, there, there's the, we've got to listen to our guidance more. I think we've got to listen to our um, our dream time and our um, angel guidance because quite often after an event we'll have got a message about something and you don't always take it on board. But you will look back and go, I knew that. I knew I shouldn't have done that. You know, so, but it's just as frustrating when you listen to the guidance and you think, oh, I shouldn't have done that. (laughs) It's just one of those things. (laughs) Well, Charlie's saying that um, she's learning about transits. Um, Well, learning about transits made a huge difference to her. Mm. And I love your shows learn so very much every time well we love presenting them too it's such a joy and i think we're coming up to 11 or 12 years now in it well it's it's possibly 11 for me and you joined very shortly after i believe so so what an archive for people to listen to i know I know, and those really early shows, you know, we used to have three presenters on and we'd have these plans and then we'd get on the show and you'd listen back after the show because you didn't always get the chance to wait for three hours um, right. to listen to them all and you'd listen to them after and you go, oh, my God, we didn't rehearse any of that and yet they were so aligned all the time, weren't they? You know, and you'd go off on a tangent, but it was a tangent that had a, it had a thread all the way through the three sessions that we had. And, and that, um, that- fascinates me Mm. and I do believe that um, those early years on blog talk radio we no longer have those because we no longer um, oh okay we haven't got the archives for them anymore however there are almost two years of videos on angel heart radio and uh, YouTube so lovely because I know next week Marnie is my last show for the year i treat myself to january off 
Mm. And it's really lovely to know that people can still access Angel Heart Radio. Yeah, And um, so if they want uh, to listen to Annette and Marnie or if they want to listen to the other shows that I do with other presenters, there's an absolute plethora. To, yeah, uh, to and abundance. And, and what a blessing is Anaya to have gifted yes. us all this, these opportunities that we um, gladly accept and, and um, enjoy. Because it's such a, it's such something I look forward to every month is is the show and being able to chat. Because you know we can talk well. <laughs> well, we're so fortunate because we can chat with people all over the world, which is what we've done this morning. And Absolutely. thank you so much, everyone, for popping in. Yes, it has been wonderful. Julie saying, "Have a great January." Um, I'd like to wish everybody a uh, wonderful. Christmas and a holiday season where we do treat ourselves as mm. our best friend because kindly treat ourselves kindly yes yes, yes. So joy and blessings to all thank you very very much money 2021 what a year oh, I know weird and <laughs> I do look forward to being back with you in February, the second Thank week of February. 2022 has a particular ring to it. I like all of those twos. Yes, yes, they're very interesting. And we'll so, come back in February, so we're coming back in 2.22. Yeah, isn't that, that's Yeah, I don't know what that, I've got a diary here. Second, I'll see what our second Thursday the second is. Week, yeah, the second week of the second month of 2000 i thought it might have been the 12th but it's not the 10th of february so there you go all right thank you marnie thank you everybody who has been Bye -bye. with us this morning. thank you whenever you choose to watch this we appreciate your support very very much we do